Good morning everyone welcome to my channel so in today's video I'm going to do some more work on my crazy quilting patch to do with the vintage blend studio prompts and I was a busy girl so I need to bring you up to speed because I had a little bit of a stitch and it just kept going and going and I couldn't put it down so I think in the last video I was starting to explore the idea of bringing on more of the burgundy through this this leaf I, I'm just I started thinking it was all about the pinks and the purples but this leaf I don't know if it's because it's in the center that it's dragging my eye to it that I started getting a lot heavier with my color palette through here and I just love it then I worked on this now in the last video I started piecing together all of uh, those little elements so let me bring it up to the screen there's some little beads some more of those little squishy roses um, that's the three little wagon wheels with the ribbon wrapped around them I finished those did some little fly stitch to add the leaves and there's those little sequins little sequin leaves that I tucked in around the place I ended up using some of those pre-made flowers. You know, they were just kicking around all the time and I kept sort of looking at them, but they didn't work here. They worked there because this is quite a chunky looking little feature of flowers. And then I added a little pearl to the center of them. That sort of drags in that pearl. I'm finding with this panel is I keep looking back to these main areas then drifting those colors through. And you'll see what I mean in a moment here. Now... At the top here I sat down just before this video and stitched this I was actually on the phone to um, Susanna and we're chatting away and I just started doing random stitches here like trying to keep it quite loose now as you'll see here I got my inspiration from these leaves on Jennifer's book um, I saw those and I thought well I might just do a collection of stems and pistol stitches and a um, bit of cast on stitch so I just if you can slow your eye down and start here we've got some fly stitch that's a bullion knot just on the top of a stitch big fly stitch that's cast on stitch but making it sort of sit in a little circle at the top of a straight stitch over here the cast on stitch is in a line to make like a little bud at the top of a straight stitch and here I did extra stitches to make it twist so there's sort of three different ways of approaching cast on stitch uh, lots of fly stitch bullion knots French uh, pistol stitches a lazy daisy so you can see I just meandered through then I've, I sort of got to here and I thought well it's not that interesting and added just some little scraps of the calico and then stitched up onto that calico so it's like getting into the slow stitch now that probably wouldn't have happened back in the 90s when we were doing pieces we wouldn't have put extra pieces of fabric on those segments and Jennifer's like reinventing the whole crazy um, quilting by making us focus not only on that seam decoration but building in additional elements that drift over all of the pieces and that's sort of where you know all of this comes into it I feel it's like we're modernizing it I think I'm trying to say so now I'm up at this section and I laid down the lavender lace which brings in the lavender from here and brings in the lavender from here so like I said before I'm sort of trying to drift the colors through then I went through and stitched a sequin with a pearl bead a big pearl a sequined pearl sequin pearl like I alternate it which is classic crazy quilting I chose the green which I believe you already know so that I feel like that ties in too and that that tone is sort of in these leaves it's sort of this is an interesting piece of fabric because it goes from pastel colors into dark moody colors so therefore I couldn't really just do pastel or moody I've had to blend it all together and I think it's actually starting to really work um, 
when I was doing all the beading, I used the same bead and dropped a bead into the center of that braid right through, just to try and keep that bead element happening. Now that I'm looking up here, um, I've done a, a camphor stitch through, so that text fabric has a running stitch over the whole thing. If you can see it, see it there? So I've made that feel quilty. That's very much slow stitch today. I've stitched in another little patch that was some embroidered little flowers on a piece of fabric. So I've just cut out a little piece and I felt like those colours helped bring the dark moodiness to the piece. Now this purple, I've got to now try and blend this pastel in with dark. That's been the whole challenge. That's probably the best way to say it. Blending pastel tones with dark tones and mushing it all together. So I've just started doing a V pistol stitch in between each one of those um, little lavender flowers. And I got to the point like, if I don't turn the camera on, I'm gonna have this finished and all it'll be is a 15 minute, this is what I've done video where I prefer to just try and explore it and develop it as we go. So I just want to do a couple more pistol stitches with the colonial knot at the top and finish that. Then we need to decide what else we're going to do with this hint of this burgundy popping up here and how elaborate we want to you know, I guess, decorate it. So that's where I'm at. I feel like I've caught you up. And now I chatted for probably an hour on the phone to Susanna, Susanna from Vintage Blend Studio. She's put some more beautiful fabrics and, oh, I tell you that girl, she's got some great resources around her. So she's, oh, some of her packs coming out these days she's um i think going to france and england has really inspired her because she's been immersed in pretty much the history of textiles so i guess when we're in australia we sort of really only see a small portion of what's really happened in history so i think it's really fine-tuned her eye and she's picking pieces now that are just beautiful and putting together some great packs so it saves her that freight you know for the Aussie girls we're having to buy in from Europe and America the freight is just huge yet to send it out to you everyone the freight's actually pretty good it's quite economical to post from Australia out yet bringing it in it's not so must get subcontracted out a fair bit. So there's all these extra charges. Oh, I don't know how it works, but anyway, it's good that she's starting to develop a bit of a, a um, textile fabric pack business. It's always been there, but she's really, really getting into it. And I'd say immersing herself in the history of textiles has probably really helped her freshened her enthusiasm for her love of textiles. I can hear it in her voice. I can hear the, <laughs> the excitement when she finds a... I look for little morsels. She finds big morsels. Have I got enough thread to do another stitch? Maybe. So while I was chatting to her, and because this is her prompt project, I was sort of showing her what I was up to because she's working on it as well. <clears throat> Yeah, we're chatting away and suddenly I finished all of those green features here and I said to her, I'm going to have nothing to show everyone because I've just finished all of that. I need to turn my phone off. Social activities being planned. I'll just silence that just in case. A dear friend's just found out he's got a little sun cancer on his lips, so that's who the message was from. He's got to have a, a little sun cancer nipped off, hopefully. It's not a nasty one. It's just a case of a nip and a tuck 
I told him that'll keep him quiet for a little while. He's a chatter like me. Okay, so I just need a couple more up there, but already that pale lavender is got a little bit of life in it up there. So I don't want it too elaborate, but we need it to feel, I don't know, like it is a crazy patchwork. So I've got Jennifer's book here as a bit of a reference. I thought maybe there's something in there that I can can do or at least set me off on a, a bit of a thought process. One more. I feel like I need to get maybe even a little bit of that soft pink up into there. That's, I grabbed out this thread because I don't think I've, see these, these little pinks down here, I think I need to do something with them up there. So I'd have a look through Jennifer's book. I also grabbed out these sequins. I thought maybe, like I love those. I haven't even got past the cover. I love those. It's like a ribbon stitch, then the purple, then the white. But I don't think I have enough ribbon. Like, that's a lot of flowers. That'd be good in, like, a little space like that. You could do some dainty little flowers. So, what will we do? Oh, look, look, look at that flower. Stay focused. For goodness sakes, <laughs> I don't have the space. So I, I might have a look at these sequins first. And let's see. Yeah, I don't mind that. So I could do them in a diamond fashion. I could do them in a square I like the diamond. Let's spin him around. Make him a square. See, they're a good colour because they're bringing that burgundy up here. Square or diamond? Let's zoom in and show you guys. Not that it'll influence me much because I need to make a decision. I think I like the diamond. So... What are we going to put in the center of the diamond? Where's my beads? Um, that would bring a bit of pink, but I don't think I've used these anywhere, so I don't want to try and... Oh, look, my beads have spilt a little... The little purple ones, oh, the lid wasn't closed. And look what I've just spotted. Look at this. <laughs> look at that. Oh, my goodness. And it would have to be the little ones, wouldn't it? It's never the big beads. It's the little ones. No, I'm not going to use them because now I don't like them. <laughs> I need something to go in there, do I? Do I match it or do I highlight it? Hmm, just thinking. Do I pop a green in there? Let's get needle and thread happening. Do I just do that? There's an opportunity, I think, to get another colour in. And I'm liking the idea of the green. See, I've got a lot of emails dropping in. What's happening out in the world? Is there something going down? I don't think there is. That's the wrong needle. That's not going to be big enough at the other end. I 
let's just I suppose I could do every second one too. Like, this is all about repetitive patterns at the moment. <clears throat> Not so much down here. It was more about creating a, a break from the repetitive patterns. But we could mix it up. And that's what makes it look more elaborate. So what's going to stop that from actually twisting? I'm going to need it to sit where I want it to sit, aren't I? So, oh, it's fiddly. I think I might put some stitches over it. That too will add a different look. and hold it and then I can think about what we put in the center of it and the little center element is not having to hold the diamond into position yeah I like that I like how that's brought some different that first stitch is a little bit off see how it's <laughs> look that stitch there doesn't bug me enough to undo it it does. Sorry, guys. Sometimes you can just carry on. Other times, you just have to stop and take it out. And it's the first stitch, is it? No, it was the second stitch. Okay, so that's good. All right, start again. So this little flower bud thing... Let's just get that thread back down on the back. We're aiming for the center on that side of the sequin. Oh, come on. That's got it. Now to the center. Well, that's better probably throwing the camera in and out of focus my hand sliding in so I'll try to go down and out so that it doesn't lose focus thanks Apple for updating our phones so that the camera quickly goes fuzzy to refocus at the closer distance it's all technology but it doesn't do YouTube filmers any favors all right so we've got our little diamond there so let's come up through the center and decide. Oh, come on. There we go. What we put in there. Do we do a little green? It picks up the green in the braid. Is it really seen? Not really. It's not strong enough. Do we pick up? A cream and bring the background forward. I sort of actually like that. Where's my needle gone? There it is. Where's the bead gone? And it, oh, of course, it doesn't fit through the needle. Right, oh, no. Reginald. Calling Reginald. Where are you? Here he is. My nasty little bead needle. Just behave yourself, Reginald. If there's any injuries to be had from a needle, Reg is involved. Hence why he now is named. <laughs> it's funny when I see comments from you guys that you've been working with your Reginald and you've been bitten by him. It's just got a bad attitude. Yeah, I like that. That brings the cream background into play. Those little beads are down, down here, scattered. So they're now up the top here. Sort of don't want to bring too many more new things into it, I guess. Yeah, I like that. So that'll work. Do I do every second one? Okay, let's make a decision. 
to undo that or do I do that? No, it's that. So let's do, see we have Reginald do this fiddly. This is fiddly, fiddly type of work this is. Let's get Reg to quickly stitch down the sequin. Come on. Then we'll add our Reg. And then we will add a stem. We need something connecting it to the to the you know anchoring the whole if I had a heap of ribbon I would have done the little roses up here but it's just gobbles up too much I guess that's a benefit if your patches were smaller. You would only have a little bit when you would feel okay about using, you know, a heap of the, a heap of your ribbon. But this is quite a long lineal line, so I've got to come up with some other ideas. Okay. Just going to put a second. Can't find the hole. Come on, Reg. I know you're poking around in the back there. What's going on? Why can't I find the hole? If I get too close, that needle's going to go straight in my nail. There we are. We got it. It's usually not that much of a struggle. So let's get the bead stitched twice. Okay. And then we'll do one more. So then we've got the general gist of it. Fiddly. This might be the end of this idea once I do this whole piece. You'll never see sequin stitched like this again if, <laughs> if it becomes non enjoyable. <laughs> Too fiddly. Especially when you've got to involve Reg here. Fraught with danger. I like how they're a little bit harlequin. Okay, back up through the center, pick up my bead. So that's three, so that's not too bad. Once I concentrate on it and get a bit of a rhythm happening, I think, um, I think it will come together. Now I've got to get back up through. Come on, Reg, find your way. Why is this proving to be so difficult? I know the hole in the center of that sequin is pretty small, so I'm not making it easy. Okay. And I'll just come up over here with my thread just so that it holds and it's ready for me to continue. Okay, so we've got three little little flowers. Now we need to connect them. What are we going to do? I could use some green and put a little stem, but that green disappears. So that's not going to work. Um, where is the darker green? Maybe that I use down. I might just come up in the camera, guys, just so you can see the whole story. Um, that's the green I used down here. It's a little bit lost. 
That's a new color. Don't bring in a new color. New color. Um, maybe I do stick with that pink I had out earlier. My instinct was this pink. Let's have a look. I think this is Pearl Cotton Skein Spotlight. Um, where is it? DMC 605 Pearl Cotton, yeah. That'd be a skein. So let's do from the bottom a pistol stitch. Or just a straight stitch, sorry, not a pistol stitch, just a straight stitch up. So it looks like that little guy is connected to something. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, you guys can't probably see. See, it's just a little pink stitch. So then I can jump over here. And straight down. So we've got a real pink and burgundy thing happening here, which I'm happy with. Straight down, yep. Now I wonder if I could do... That one would be up there, so we'll just bring that thread out of my way so I can carry on. I wonder what would it look like if I did a little lazy daisy or something. Just thinking going back to the pink a darker pink could be pretty let's have a play I feel like the little sequin could be cupped like have a little something on the side of it let's have a look at this I can thread the needle because when you look at Jennifer's work there's like layers upon layers of little details and it really starts to make make it look interesting whether a lazy daisy is the right thing to do is but we'll give it a so we'll come up where the straight stitch finished at the bottom of the I don't know. I'll aim for the corner of the sequin and just put in a loosish daisy stitch. Yeah, I do like that. adds another layer of interest to that little flower yep I like it let's do the next one because maybe that's going to connect it in some way visually and it'll look like a little V stitch scooting along there it's taken the harshness of that diamond shape out the lazy daisy, the one side of that stitch is actually laying on the sequin. So it's looking like it's within a petal scenario. Would have been nice with ribbon, ribbons. Really fine. Oh, this is fun. I can see why it was addictive this crazy patchwork. I still wouldn't like to do a big project like they were all doing. Hats off to you all. If you've got a quilt lying in your spare room on the spare bed, all stitched, my goodness. 
absolute to you. I remember going to quilt shows back then and seeing them on display and I was like, wow, that's years of work. I'll bring the thread up here ready for that when I'm ready. But that's good because that's picked up that darker colour again. So let me bring up the camera. See how there's little lazy daisy stitches uh, either side of the sequin? I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. That'll look quite pretty up there. And I think it'll bring enough of the, the dark tone. Okay. Now, what else can we do? Can't be finished there, surely. There has to be. I feel like I could do with some more patches of fabric. Maybe we have a fiddle. Because we've got to bring it into the slow stitch world. We've got to, you know, break the rules a bit. Maybe there's something we can do down here or something. I feel like that's too big and overpowering. Oh, what if that was all ratty like that? Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. No. I'm sort of focusing on this centerpiece now and feel like I could do a little collaging or something just to make it more interesting and I still have a couple of these left so maybe I could do something a bit random I don't know who knows let's just play let's get them out of there It'd be great to see the last of them too so maybe we can Create a bit of a, a random a bit of this and a bit of that. Let's get ourselves just a little clustery thing. Have we got any? lace. When in file, add lace. Here's my little bag of bits and bobs. Oh, that needle is going to scratch me. I've got some of this left from a previous project. Maybe we can build that in and that in and just to make it a little interesting. Ooh, I like that. You guys are probably thinking, where is she heading with that? Well, she has no idea either. I feel like I've just created a banner for something. I know. What if we were to add a word or a charm? Um, I haven't used my charms for ages. You know, scrapbooking, where you start getting containers of bits. Maybe there's something in here that suits. Like a word would be good. They're all very silly. Oh, there's a little bird. There's a little bird here. I don't mind him. Can we do better? Oh, that little bird's looking good. Let's just pull out one more container. I think somewhere there is some words. They're just beads, I think. No. Beads. 
Oh my goodness, now I'm pulling stuff out. Oh, there's a charm thing. How does this look? That'd be good on honey bear, wouldn't it? No. Little butterfly. Don't mind that. Gosh, you forget you have half of this stuff. Oh my goodness. Like there's a little bracelet that I used to have and it broke. So it's ended up in here. Goodness me. It just reminds me of the poor quality of some of the stuff I buy when I look at that and go, oh, oh. makes me angry. What's that? Oh, that's mermaids and I sort of like this. I don't know. See, it's got a little butterfly in it. It must have been a Tim Holtz. Is that open? Oh, look, it's a locket. Oh, I think that has to go to treasured items, doesn't it? Didn't even know I had the treasure. I like this bird. Do I like the bird? I do. But there's these words. I just need to get them out of my system. Here we go. Paper clips. We've got paper clips. Nothing exciting in here is where we want to be. There's one more container we need to put our nose in. If it, oh, yeah, all right, okay. <laughs> See, we've got these words, together and laughter. With the bird. Oh, I like that. Do I want together or laughter? See, this one's stitched on a piece of fabric already. That'd just be too easy. I think it's laughter because I was doing this piece, you know, before I turned on the camera with um, Susanna and we were laughing like a pair of school kids. These are more bronzed. I think, yeah, Birdie's gone. See, there's random things in here. Now Birdie's in a new container where he doesn't actually belong. Ooh, that'd be good for treasured. I'm filming this video ahead of time, so it's very possible that the Roxy girls have given us a prompt. And that may be already in a video and you're seeing that already, but it's nice to have a rummage just to remind myself of what you have and haven't used. Here's some butterflies. Would a butterfly work? There's a little one that's... I must have connected it. That's not going to sit well in my book. Those wings are uh, angled, so I don't, don't think that'll work. I think that could work. Oh, this piece is just getting out of control now. It is crazy patchwork. I don't think there's too many rules, but we've got to try and still complement what we're doing. It's too big, I think. I'm going to put the word laughter in because we would... We were literally laughing like idiots 10 minutes ago, Susanna. And it's her project, and I certainly do get the cackles when I'm with her. And she has a good laugh too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this little cluster, and I'm going to stitch that word into the, nestle it into the seam there. Whoops. So where's my needle and thread? Let's get these little bits and that will pretty much finish the piece, I think. We've got this little little thing happening. And then I think by the time I finish this top row, that'll look quite um, dense. 
and intricate and I guess that leaves three little flowers for a rainy day. Three is a good number. So we'll put them away. No need to use it all. Because you can guarantee I'll be doing something in the future and I'll be like, oh, if only I had those little flowers, they would be perfect about now. So I'm going to put the pearl in the center because I did over here on those three. So we better put the pearl in. That pearl appears over here, so it's sort of all is starting to tie together. It starts to look like we've actually got a thing happening here. Let's do one more stitch in that pearl just to make sure it's held. Just going to do just some little invisible stitches here to hold these little elements into position. I should put a pin in because it's flipping everywhere. Let's do that. Now, do we want to keep it straight? Yeah, we do. Let's just get a few little stitches there first. So now we've really got the whole slow stitch thing coming into this piece, which sort of suits what I've, oh, I've come up in the center of that. I don't like that. Come out, come out. I think I'll go in with some crochet cotton and actually do a little box or a little rough edge stitch or something. So I'm gonna, going to end that off and think about that pink a little bit more. It's all those little details. So let's get this classic Crochet cotton colour, my go-to favourite for everything. Maybe a little X. Maybe a little Y stitch, fly stitch. Let's get laughter in place. I think that's great. That definitely feels like a tribute to Susanna. And I like the fact that I've got this metal element. What have I just pulled through? Some threads from that piece of... Okay. Now, let's I've got little fibers have got caught up in that. Let's end that off and go to the other end of the little piece. I remember when I got those, it was um at a patchwork, uh, sorry, a scrapbook shop, and they put out a trestle table of bits and pieces just to clear some space for some, you know, you just got to do it sometimes when you have these shops. So they're clearing space for new products and they had just buckets of charms and they were 10 cents each. I couldn't believe it. So I bought all of them. I think I got about 20, 30 of the word together and the word laughter. 
And every so often I pull them out and pop one on a piece and they're just great. They're, they're not too imposive. Like it's just a thin sort of element. I'm always surprised where they pop up. Let's get our stitch a little bit better positioned there. That was not quite around the side of the charm. So always keep your eyes open for little metal elements or you've got metal ele elements that you used to use in the scrapbook world. Like bring them out and start popping them on your slow stitch pieces because even like little sayings and that just adds that little focal point. They're always fun. I really need to go through the old charm boxes again and just refresh my memory. So what can we do here? Can I do some little fly stitches, really small? That would bring in the fly stitches that are over here. That would tie in that. Let's have a look. Yep, that'll work. Just puts a little bit of interest. So let's do a taller one. Close to that first one. And that'll hold that little piece of slippery fabric down. And we can do a little one over here. So it's like a little itty bitty garden. Just gives that little bit of detail. Okay, so a couple of little fly stitches. Like, where do you stop? <laughs> oh my goodness. I think that is it for the piece, to be honest. I think, I think once that goes in up here, it'll feel quite heavy and bulky and it'll balance itself with the rest of the piece. I really, yeah, I'm really happy with that. There's lots of interesting things happening now, and I think that's the whole premise of this um, crazy, all oh, those beads. I just looked in there and saw those purple beads again. Let me just get this flat before there's more trouble. Don't need those, I need those. And I think that's the, that's the premise of it. It's the, the little details, like even, see this yellow flower? Jennifer's put three little, two little, one little, one little, tiny little rose. It's like out of ribbon with a bead in the center. It's those little details. Then you look again and there's little French knots popping around the back there. Just incredible. You can spend hours. She's twisted the ribbon, then built the, the flower, then the little flowers, but they're not the same over here. Like your instinct has put those three over here as well. It becomes very uniform, but no, she does a whole different little thing here as she's done over here. It's really about, if I'm understanding where Jennifer is wanting to take us, it's about, yes, the overall picture has to be connecting to your palette, but it's all about these little, little bits of things. Now, I'm, I do a, a lot of embroidery, but I do a lot of collage as well. So bringing in, for me, is bringing in these layers of little, like I could even put some little beads in through all this and really embellish that bottom edge there. Like you could just keep going and going. Love it. All right, and it was just all come from that one piece of fabric in the middle that was my colour palette to keep me focused, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Now, all right, oh, 10 minutes or so to go. All right, well, I might leave it at that. I'll go away and stitch this, then I'll come back in a few seconds and show you it finished unless something else pops into my brain and I do something else. But I think, I feel like it's okay. All right, guys, be back in a second um, and see where it went. All right, won't be long. Hello, everyone. I'm back. I'm finished. I'm finished. I've put down the needle and I'm really happy with the way this top banner came up. I feel like it's chunky enough, 
to handle what's happened below without being too overpowering. So I've um, didn't really change what we talked through in, when we did the just a little bit of a, a sampler there. I've just hit duplicate. So really feels a very crazy patchworky to me. Happy with this down through here. This feels like the slow stitch world has joined the crazy patchwork world. Um, I probably could put a bit of colour through here, but I'm just going to leave it at that. I, I just don't want to overpower the simplicity of this. And I like how I've got these little morsels of um, uh, calico there just to sort of, I don't know, connect it all together. I think it's interesting enough. So that's where I'm at with the piece. I'm going to call it finished. So now I'm just going to, I'll zoom out and I'm going to get it stitched into my journal. So let me just tuck those little tassels in that pocket because they're flipping around everywhere. So it was planned to go here. Oh yeah, that works. They work. See this pink over here? The pink there picks up there. The blues. Yeah, the only thing that's staring out at me is this yellow, but I'm okay with that. It's just one of those little elements that just had to go there. But overall, pretty happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is that's that's the page that my next two pieces would go on, this being one of them. And in this scenario, I've actually got it the ability to split it open so I can stitch freely here and then the next piece will go here and then the two will come together hiding all my stitches. So I'm just going to flip that out of my way and because it's got that soft uh, tab spine on this journal it makes it really easy to get my place where I can stitch you know freely so I'm just going to nestle that in there. I need it to go right into the seam because it did get a bit bigger than it should have, which is just typical. And I'm just going to now pin it. Ow. Ow. Oh, I bought some new pins and gee, they're sharp, which is, you know, a good thing. Because the last lot of pins I've been buying have just been shocking. Now this little piece of fabric behind here finishes about there. So my invisible stitching to attach it really needs to shimmy just through that zone. So that's probably enough. So if you're unsure on how I put my pieces into my little stitchery journals, Here's a little snapshot of it. I figured we had 10 minutes to spare. So now I will stitch it in. So I'm just going to find, find my fabric. There it is there. Come up. Go straight back down where I was. And then jump forward about two centimeters. As long as it's not crashing into anything imperative this side which it's not and come straight back down jump forward straight back down jump forward so now I'm coming up here oh you can't even see let me just move that a little bit straight back down so it's a tiny itty bitty stitch on the top in amongst my work but on the back we are jumping forward Probably a good two centimeters, tiny little stitch. And that's all I do. What's that from? That's the calico. Jumping forward. And that will fasten it onto the page. Jumping forward. Forward again. So I've jumped out off of the calico, so that's just a waste of stitch. I need to get myself back onto the calico. Gone a little bit crooked, but that's okay. Back 
down. So I've fastened that side, get rid of the pins. Now I'm going to head back along this edge here. So that's all I do. It's like just a tacking stitch for the newbies out there. It's great to see so many new people. Well, even I say new people, but it's usually you've done a little bit of this type of work years ago or learnt it when you were young and it's now popping back up on your radar. You're seeing some inspiration that's sort of allowing you to get the needle and thread out yourself, which is fantastic. Especially some of these old techniques like what Susanna's put together here. I'm finding elements from previous pages of jumping into projects. I think it's just fantastic. Revisiting the classics, so to speak. So I might just spin my journal around because I'm feeling a little cack-handed here. And I might spin it around like that and then I can come up that spine. Now we've only got one more page left to do, which is the um, needle turn applique prompt and um, I have more room in this journal so even though the project is officially finished I believe I'll still pick it up from time to time and use this color palette because I'm just loving these tones and there's probably bits and pieces around in my craft room that might inspire a similar project, you know, where we revisit something that's a little bit old, old world style of stitching. I'm saying old world, but gosh, it's really only the 80s and 90s. That's not too long ago, was it? <laughs> gosh. I'm going to be antique soon. I was born in the 70s. Soon I'll be an antique. Goodness me. So I'm just whizzing up this side. I'm running out of thread, but I think I'll get to the top. I think the two elements for the next one is a pin cushion and a teacup. So they seem interesting. Don't know what I'll do yet. So I'm just going to end this off and get a new thread because it's a bit too short. Why struggle? Okay. So it's down there, down there, down there so far. A little bit of a dog leg here and there, but that's okay. Talking and stitching at the same time. Guaranteed I will go crooked. Guaranteed. I love all those colours. Like, oh, it actually has inspired me this piece to do another project. I won't say anything yet because maybe it's just one of those projects that floats around in my head for a while and then I'm over it and moved on. But it is hanging around and it's the colour palette that um, burgundy and the pink. I just really, really love it. So now I'm just coming along this top edge, tiny little stitch, big jump stitch underneath, tiny little one. The good thing about stitching your pieces into a book like this is, A, you know where they are, they're in a journal, and B, you can actually snip them out. Let's say you decide to enter a piece of work into a show or even frame it or gift it. You can just snip them out. This little tacking stitch can be removed. Out pops your piece. You might decide to enter two or three pieces into the local show. And then when they come back home, stitch them back into your journal. At least you know where they are and they're nice and safe. And they're um, dust free. So that's it. That is now in and done. Let me just snip that off. 
Let's spin it around. So that page is now secure to the little signature underneath. So if I get this book back and I'm ready for the next prompt. So I've got my calico already. It's going to tidy up a bit here. Everything's flip-flopping around. Put the little ties back in the pockets because I don't want them to get damaged. Here's my next panel. So if I go back here, there's the, the free uh, page. This panel will go here. It can be stitched onto there. And then when I'm ready, closed up. And that will then form the last piece that will back onto that page. So that's how I pretty much put my books together. And because I've got this nice big soft spine, so I've still got a signature to go. So that's four more pieces that I can do to complete the book, which I'm positive I will do because I've got my panels ready. Yeah, I'm I'm positive there will be a third signature to this because I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And you can see my spine is starting to bulk out. So these will be very full. There's the first two signatures and there's the, the last signature without anything attached. And they're just stitched in with big stitches onto a piece of um, fabric that has a bit of lace on it. Lace on the outside and I put a check on the inside and then did a little bit of decorative stitching and it sort of pops through between all of the pages. There you go. Love it. Love it. And even these pages here, like last time, I actually, because I wanted these two to be together, I didn't join these two pages. I separated them to get that extra piece in. That's why there's actually five within that signature. So that would mean, let's say I wanted two pieces that complemented each other, they could go here or that stitches down and it's only one piece. So by doing, I guess, double signatures, it does allow you to suddenly, if your ideas start expanding and you wanted to do a bigger spread, you can split your pages. As long as your spine allows that space, which it does in this scenario, I'm pretty confident I could probably slide a fifth piece into each signature if I wanted because it's a nice generous spine and that book is nowhere near full like even if I stretch out that spine see that there's air everywhere so definitely got plenty of space which is lovely all right everyone I will leave it at that because I'm rambling on and we're over the hour oh it's really coming together loving it loving it okay we'll see you in the next video have a lovely day and uh, bye for now bye